from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering Samsung Developer Conference 2017. Brought to you by Samsung. Hello everyone, welcome to day two coverage of the Samsung Developer Conference, or SDC 2017. I'm John Furrier, co-host of theCUBE, co-founder of SiliconANGLE Media. I'm here with Anouk Wiprecht. Hard to say last name, but I have a hard time with my R's, it's an East Coast thing. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you so much. So I'm super excited to chat with you because you're doing some really innovative things around fashion tech, which we, we think is going to be at the cusp of a whole new revolution of, of fashion, embedding tech. Um, before we get started, I have some pointed questions, so to speak. Yeah. Um, talk about what you're working on. Um, People might not know some of your dresses. The spider dress has been famous. Talk about your work, and then we'll jump into it. Yeah, I do. An, um, yeah, I work as my own uh, self, sort of on fashion and technology. So the, the combination of fashion and technology. Um, so yeah, some of my dresses they are bleeding ink, they are surfing cocktail shots, they are uh, attacking really with mechanic uh, <coughs> spider legs on the shoulders. Mm -hmm. uh, they are uh, exploding in a layer of smoke, sort of. So I do a lot with animatronics and robotics. Yeah. And what I want to do is that uh, fashion is augment augmenting us sort of, you know, so creating an interaction. So you're designing dresses in a way that's integrating new elements yeah. with some tech, robotic arms, the spider dress is one that kind of retracts and has some coolness to it, but there's also the smoke dress. Yeah. Uh, what are the, how many dresses have you uh, designed? Um, give us the taste of the flavors and the reactions. Yeah, um, so I have in total 37 dresses, so it's a really big family mm -hmm. and the family starts to expand more and more. And uh, yeah, for me it's a lot about um, expression and about investigating um, how if you place these pieces of technology on the body, what they can do sort of, you know. So seeing fashion as an interface, because I always say, Garments are there to shelter us, you know, to keep mm -hmm. us comfortable in a way. And uh, for me, fashion is something different. For me, fashion is about expression and about communication, you know. And for me, this fashion is analog, like our garments are analog. They're yeah. not digital, yeah. they're not interactive, you know. So I want to put like computer boards, like microcontrollers in everything yeah. and sensors in everything. So they start to come alive and they can really uh, yeah. express us, you know. And by that, really interesting things come because do you want to be always expressed or do you always want to emote yourself? or how does, yeah. does that go sort of, you know, I think that is for me my biggest fascination, like researching this field. Yeah, and it's here at the Samsung Developer Conference, so obviously front and center um, on the keynotes you're hearing, um, you're seeing your work and other things displayed. Yeah. They're calling it smart things. Yeah. Clothes can be smart. Mm -hmm. And you're kind of going down that what road. Obviously robotics is a first step because you can, that's cool tech. Yeah. But digital displays are coming, right? Correct. Imagine like my top tweet oh, yeah. on my shirt or <laughs> you know, or my Facebook post or my friends. Yeah. Um, using the data. Mm -hmm. How are you thinking about this as a designer? I mean, you know, most people will think geeky, okay, I got the data and database, but as an artist, yeah. as a designer. I myself, I do this uh, for about 12 to 15 years. So I started in the beginning of 2000s, really trying to see how fashion can become this interface. And I think like by me growing into this, like technology got smaller and smaller mm -hmm. and it got closer to the body in a way, mm -hmm. right? So it's, it was able to embed in your garments and, um, I think that just opens up like so many interesting possibilities that hasn't been explored yet, except for only like the Fitbits yeah. and the watches, you know, the smart watches that are more bothering us, like, you know, but they don't do anything with a, like, data visualization, they don't do anything to visualize this data, it's only basically in the screen and I want to get it out of the screen and into the real life, yeah. sort of, you know. So one of the most popular dresses that I noticed on Twitter and uh, on, on Google search was the spider dress. Mm -hmm. That's a like mechanical arm, it's got like spider legs that comes out, it's a cool, cool experience. Yeah. Also you uh, have the smoke dress. Mm -hmm. that, talk about what they do differently. I mean, talk about the, the spider dress, the smoke dress, and what was the one with the heartbeat? Share, share with some of the, what the dresses personify. Yeah. So the spider dress um, I created, or had a pleasure to create with the semiconductor company Intel, and um, this dress is really about personal space. There's proximity sensors uh, under the chin, so they are measuring. So they're measuring when people come into the personal space, and when people do, there's mechanic legs on the shoulders, and they are basically attacking. <laughs> but then not just in one way, it would be boring, sort of, you know? So depending on how yeah, you walk yeah. into the space and where you're standing, it's reacting differently. So uh, somebody's yeah. walking up to you very fast in your dress, yeah. It's reacting it's very like spider fast, sense. sort of, you know? It's like yeah. a spider sense and you can feel yeah. kind of an expression, whoa, stay back, or yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, ready you to can engage. Yeah, you can use this uh, yeah piece of technology which is hosted on your yeah. body in order to do something that we might not do, yeah. like defend yourself. An animal, if you come in the closeness of a cat, the cat would give you a claw, right? Yeah. But uh, we would say like, oh, we would choose to maybe feel uncomfortable, yeah. you know, this way. So I was thinking, if you have a system on the body that yeah. can do that for you, well, yeah. that's technology helping you out, right? Yeah, certainly. If someone gets too close, uncomfortable, yeah. a little shock treatment might help keep, yeah, yeah, keep people away. Yeah. Right, that's fun. That's a fun example. But I think this is kind of revolutionary in my opinion. It's like, this is so kind of cool because you got technology, you got expression, mm -hmm. you got human interaction, all these things going on. Talk about the smoke dress, what is that about? Yeah, to just point out, like I think one, like working with this, one of the main factors that I think is really interesting is that a technology doesn't become a tool, it becomes a companion. It lives on your body, it lives with yeah. you, and it can maybe also listen to your body signals, and it knows how you're doing, and that is sometimes not with handheld devices. They don't know how you feel, but as soon as it's on the body, it feels your heart, it can sense yeah. your brain, it can sense your pulse, your muscle contraction. And I think that makes it really interesting. These new technologies on the body, yeah. they can really uh, yeah, listen to us. And so they're coming you know. faster too. You're seeing out oh, here, Samsung Health yeah. uh, is the first step. Obviously that's the sensors on the body, it's an Internet of Things device. Yeah. Um, and the phone is just in a companion. But also I would just say that we had some guests yesterday, some influencers yeah. on validating that augmented reality is so much more advanced. This points to what you're doing. It's not necessarily virtual. Yeah, it's just correct. augmenting what the human's doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. Smoke, uh, smoke dress, and what's that other dress that does the heart? Yeah, thing? smoke dress basically, uh, also based on sensors, the more people are around in the surroundings, uh, the more smoke it's gave. <laughs> so almost the feeling of diving away, like shyness, yeah. you know? So working with uh, different emotions. I also created an, uh, a series of dresses for Cirque du Soleil, which we know as the theater. Yeah. They have a restaurant in Ibiza, and I created uh, dresses that make cocktails. So a little push on the button, and then a peristaltic pump in the back, and it serves a little cocktail shot and they're giving that. So looking at yeah. how uh, these designs also can be social, for example, you know, yeah. how can they be um, like uh, personal, how can they be intimate, yeah. you know? And I think that is the most interesting thing to look at that, uh, yeah. that way while designing. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. People can take these into different social situations. Yeah. Parties or large crowds, the spider could be good for that. Yeah, yeah, but also how can it help you? How can it help your shyness? How yeah. can it help you proceed in the world? How can it uh, engage you, you know? Yeah. I think like a lot of these things we don't understand yet, how technology can be this learning system, you know? How, uh, like how can we work with technology like hand in hand uh, that way as well? Um, so how did you get yeah. into all this? This is so cool. How did you I started with fashion design myself. I was 14 years old. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, the notion of like these dresses, uh, expressive, yeah. communicative, but they were analog. So when I was 17 years old, I combined it with another love of mine, which is robots. Mm -hmm. Like I love robots, oh. they're like amazing. <laughs> but uh, I didn't want the robot to stand next to me, be modeled as after human. I wanted to place the robot yeah. on my body or on the body and be uh, reacting and interacting like an animal, you know, more yeah. intuitive, uh, much more expressive or uh, like m maybe rebellious you know, um, and by that it's opening up uh, like a, yeah, a broad scale of possibilities, what you can do uh, regarding to, to that and how they can be interesting, you know? Yeah, and I think this is going to be one of those fashion tech areas. What's the industry like right now on the fashion tech, uh, for the folks that aren't following fashion tech? Yeah. Where's the state of the industry? I mean, this is cutting edge. You're doing, certainly, we love it. Yeah. Where is the industry? Correct, like, uh, um, especially like the things that I'm doing are a little bit more about extremities, right? Really provoking yeah. this notion on uh, what fashion can be as soon as it becomes interactive. But um, especially the last like five years, the technology industry, uh, again, I'm doing this for yeah, longer than 12 years. The last five years, really the technology industry is really interested in it. The last two to three years, the fashion industry starts to like, hey, look at it. But yeah. I think like technology and fashion need to go much more talking to each other in order to really yeah. make this field uh, grow and all of that, you know. And that is where we come in, the creators yeah. and the creatives, you know. Uh, we are the instigators of the, the ones that try to push these yeah. boundaries and try to bridge these gaps in little yeah. bits in order uh, to make a melting pot regarding to that setting. Well, you're doing a great job. I'm super impressed. It's super inspiring to me. I mean, I'm just intrigued by the whole thing. I got to get your reaction to how the younger generation is responding. I mean, I yeah. have uh, two daughters and two sons, but my, my daughters would probably be into this. What's the younger? I mean, the younger people must be like loving this. Yeah, Older I people, do. oh, get off my lawn, you know, it's just too 
too crazy, but maybe the younger people might like yeah. it better. What's the reaction? Yeah, first of all, I do a lot with uh, like animals. Uh, children <laughs> love animals, you know. I do myself a lot at the Maker Fair, for example. The yeah. Maker scene, I am uh, always say, I build cool stuff, you know, but also see how a new generation can learn from that. So most of my designs are open source. I do a lot of lectures at Maker Spaces, workshops with children, uh, kids and electronics, but also girls in programming, mm -hmm. uh, just to, yeah. to see how that goes. And really playful way, you know, or looking uh, at a certain topics, soft robotics or like these things, you know. So really also trying to engage that. And I think, yeah, children growing up, they love this, you know, because they, there are so many things in the yeah. screen. And as soon as that, that becomes physical, they really have an engagement with that, you know. So the maker culture is, is, is really growing. It's certainly yeah. it's been one of those awesome phenomenons that we're seeing, kind of like open source decades ago. Yeah. The creator culture, the maker culture, the builder culture. Yeah. This is a real deal. When yeah. you get consumer devices as good as you know, Samsung 8 here, um, happening. Yeah, correct. You have the smart TV. So, how do you? How are you making that open? So just take a little one minute to describe for the folks out there who might be interested in getting involved. Is there in, uh, any collaboration with universities? Is it fashion institutes? Is it on the web? Is it you have yeah. your own community share? Some yeah, well, yeah. One really big fan I am uh, of open source. So basically, open sourcing, uh, like uh, like sharing what you have. You know, you can that do. You can do that online at websites. You can put your codes online. You know, such things. And I think by That's sharing. Your website? Um, y you can find it on my website. No, there's like um, websites as for example GitHub, if you have pieces of code, you put it on there, you know, and free for the community to use. It's a lot about community sort of, you know. If I would make something, I can publish it online, um, really step by step how to do it, where to get the 3D printed model, where to get the code, and people can make an electronic ring, for example, you know. And by seeing what kind of piece you can give away from your process, somebody else can learn from that, you and know. And build on top of it. Yeah, correct. So I, I grew up with, for example, Arduino is an open source platform board and uh, it's a microcontroller board that you mm -hmm. can program and it's open source sort of free for people to uh, to just work with and it's really a big education uh, like uh, yeah part in there yeah. you know like um, education can be expensive so how can we open this up how can yeah. we make it accessible and I think that is really uh, really important to do sort of and this is great because this could democratize the closed fashion industry, yeah. open up new design opportunities yeah. from anyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and also a company, you know, you don't have to open source all, but what is that little piece that you can open source, yeah. that you can give away, that you can give to the community or to yeah. developers or people to play with? So the with. Cube team can build some cube clothes? Oh yeah. Yeah. Lenny's <laughs> 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 like, hey, wants that. Um, okay, so I got to ask um, on the community side, love this, love this vision because this is yeah. kind of an open source model. Yeah. You're building on the shoulders of others, yeah. you're one of the pioneers. What do you um, see as critical things that need to happen to continue the accelerated growth or more momentum? What would you wish to see? Um, can you give an example? Like, yeah, like what needs to happen to continue the momentum? More people participating, more designs, I think, more contributions um, from donors, yeah. more academic. I think what happens now, for example, like uh, Samsung Developer Conference, I'm part of the creative track, sort of, me and also Stan Lee, mm -hmm. uh, who gave a uh, keynote this morning. And I think like um, uh, inviting more people into each other's disciplines, you know, uh, Samsung here is inviting the creatives into the track, you know. How can the fashion industry invite technology in there, the technology industry invite fashion and all yeah. of these stuff, you know. So you can really get this melting pot of creative, the architects, the designers, the engineers, and all of that together, you know. Uh, I think that is a wonderful world that, that I love, sort of, and that I see more, much more yeah. happening, uh, the instigation of those, uh, like, yeah, those different disciplines together. I love how you have the robotics love as a kid, and you brought your fashion love together, two disciplines, mm -hmm. two amazing things. Um, advice for young girls out there today who are, you know, maybe feeling that, you know, it's a male dominated world or who might have an interest to robotics. Robotics clubs are hot right now. I mean, yeah. you go to all the elementary schools and, and high schools in America, yeah. you're seeing robotics become a big deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's your advice for young girls out there who want to develop their passions? Um, one thing is always follow your dream. If you want to have something, if you have something in mind, hey, I want to build an, an, uh, an octopus dress, you know, and it might be too far away, like how can you get there, you know? Set your goal and, and go towards there. Find it out, you know, yeah. be curious, like uh, see how you can build these things. And especially if people would say no, you, go there to prove them wrong, you know? Yeah. So that is something that I, uh, yeah. that I Don't learned. Don't take, take no for an answer, always yeah, follow your passion. Yeah, my IDs are very far out, you know, very far. So yeah. I always got like, oh, this and that, you know? And I always said no, and you know, yeah. um, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's always about following your passion. Yeah. If there's something that is really steering you, you know, go find it, yeah. because that is in the end what is driving you, you know? Yeah. It is not the money, it's not anything yeah. of that, it is your passion and something yeah. that you want to fight for. 
find that itch to scratch, always go after what you want. Okay, so final question for you is, in your experience with your cutting edge designs and all the work you're doing, which is mm -hmm. phenomenal, how have you observed the user experience of the general world these days? Because certainly mobile's out there, we see mobile, yeah. um, but as you start to push the boundaries mm -hmm. in clothing that's an expression, it's a human thing, the user experience is becoming integrated yeah, with the fabric. Correct. Yeah. What have you learned and observed about users' expectations for future user in interfaces? Yeah, I think haptic feedback is really interesting, sort of also as soon as you have garments with things in there, you know, the feedback that you can get from that notifications, or you can think of uh, different ways regarding to that, you know, like really the way we yeah. interface now with the screen, how can that be yeah. more embodied? An embodied experience, for example, is very interesting, but also how can that embodied experience become an yeah. epidermis which goes into your house? How can your living ac accessories react to ye you yeah. or your moods or emotions? I think like moods and emotion are a really interesting topic which mm -hmm. also can be much more explored yeah. regarding to interaction design and user yeah. experience design. It's interesting, I'm also visualizing coolness around an automatic QR code that could say how I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. Stay away from me today, QR code. <laughs> <laughs> you know. And then people yeah. still need to scan you. <laughs> yeah. We'll have an automatic scanner on there, one, a little <laughs> Samsung scanner with a facial recognition. No, this is yeah. pretty cool. So, But these garments are QR codes, but they're surrounding the body. They're not, yeah. like they, they have e e yeah. a broader, yeah, bandwidth to, to broadcast, right, yeah. sort of. The personal them. network is coming. Huh? Your personal clothing network. Subnet well, Nick, thank you very <laughs> much for coming on. Really appreciate it. You're doing some really, really amazing work and the creative boundaries you're pushing. It's really phenomenal. We're going to share the links of all your stuff with mm -hmm. our audience. And great to see Intel uh, helping you out and getting that spider yeah. design going. Intel's always doing cutting edge work. Yeah, so they're awesome. See that. Yeah. Thanks for coming on theCUBE, appreciate it. Good luck yeah. with all your endeavors, appreciate it. This is theCUBE mm -hmm. here. Breaking down the fashion tech at the edge <laughs> of the network. That's the new edge, is your clothes. Be ready for disruption. It's a maker culture. Get involved, check out Anuk's website. This is theCUBE, more live coverage from Samsung Developer Conference 2017 after this short break.